Jack, rip that door. I didn't actually plan to get into gaming, but then I didn't plan to get into tie-in books either. Uh, I didn't actually know what a tie-in was. I don't, I don't read novels. I'm a novelist, but I don't read. I don't like reading. I love comics. I love reading comics. I can still read comics and write them, just about. But I've come from a TV background, and I am primarily a, a sort of visual thinker. I see something in my head, I hear it, I can taste it, um, and I've got to describe what I see. So uh, I... I was, I'd started on the book, so I was doing a fair bit of story consultancy for Epic. And then one day they said, would you like to have a crack at the third game? Which I said, yeah, I think I could fit that into my busy schedule. <laughs> Bear in mind that I used to be a journalist, so for me the, the finding out is the exciting bit, the exploration. Uh, so I prefer to come with something cold. Uh, the less I know about something, the, the better. Now, that really does limit the sort of things that I can actually do in my spare time. So I've got to have this real steel door between the things I do for entertainment and the things I do professionally. But yeah, I have to come at it from the, from the bottom level. I have to deconstruct it. I, I, I have to basically reinvent the, the, the wheel. I can't follow on from something. I have to discover it for myself. And most of all, I've got to discover the characters. If they are pre-existing pre characters, then I, I want to flesh them out more, I want to fine tune them, I want to know where they came, I want to do all that. If I've got to create original characters, then it's the same way I look at the environment and go, who would be in that environment? Because the way I write anything, be it games or comics or novels, is to be inside the character's head and think, what do they do next? How, if I am Baird, how do I react to that? If I am Cole and Baird says that, how do I react? And that's how I do every single bit of writing. It's entirely from the characters' heads. I saw movement. Top of the barricade. Stay sharp. Hello? Anyone home? Knock, knock. In a novel, you can have the action driven by any number of people. And uh, even though you've got a single point, point, point of view character, because I do very tight third person POV, even if you've got one character who's the POV, the other characters interacting with them also drive the action. With a shooter like Gears, you've got to do it all through that character. So there, you know, there are, there's a certain amount of adjustment you have to do for that. Um, I think it's more the pacing. I mean, the, the really interesting thing was saying, OK, how do people experience games? They don't all sit down and sit, uh, as we're sort of watching on the, on the floor below here, sitting for 15 hours, <laughs> playing away there. Although I know people who do. There are people who will play, a, a, play a, a, a few hours or play half an hour a day or leave it for six months and you're thinking, how different does the story look to them then? Can they remember what's gone on? How much recap do you need to do without being repetitive? So it really challenges the way you use uh, the combination of, of language and the visual cues you're giving. You know, the absolute contrast is a movie in a cinema or a TV show where you're watching it effectively live whatever live means these days. You experience that at the rate that the person who's written it intends it to be seen at. It controls the pacing games. You have none of that to fall back on. You can't guarantee how, how fast someone is, is gonna consume the, the product. They could do a level one one day, leave it for six months. Uh, you don't know what they're going to do within that level. They can go different routes. Uh, they, can, they can skip the cinematics. Uh, so you've really got to be, and, You've really got to try and cover all the bases every time, but not make it look as if you're repeating information. I think there's, games will, will become the dominant storytelling and, and entertainment medium. They are good value, seriously. I mean, you, can, you could play most games for a year, and when you think about what you spend on them compared to what you spend on the, on the, on the cinema, you get something out of it because you are you're you're actually acting on the story because it's non-linear. You can even with games that don't require you to make story choices, you still engage with it a different way every time. So it's a sort of great stimulus to your uh, mental processes as well. You can pack so much into a game. I keep saying to people who don't know games, these are not brainless things. All right, you can come home from the pub after having had a few bevies and just blow a few grubs away and, and get a lot out of it. But, you yeah, know, this is quite demanding because you, you walk into some of the environments in Gears 3 and there's stuff on the walls you've got to take notice of. You might not see it the first time around, you see it the second time around and it might change what you do. It'll change how you feel about that particular part of the game. What's he expecting now, red carpet? I'm waiting to find out. Warship Sovereign. Hang on. This is KR-01 requesting permission to land. 
command. One passenger, Chairman Prescott. KR-01, this is Sovereign. You are clear to land. Deck team standing by. Wonder where Prescott managed to find a helicopter. He sure as hell didn't leave with one. He never called, he never sent flowers. Oh, I can't wait to hear this shit. I'll get the popcorn.